going on guys so tiff the garden goddess here we are in my backyard we are actually in this very small dog section and i made a really cool discovery um, a couple of days ago being quarantined i had my yard guy come back here and actually like cut the grass because um <laughs> it's the dogs area so I wasn't really like keeping it clean or anything like that um, planted a vine right there that's a clematis and um, just really trying to get this place nice and neat um, so I'm gonna flip the camera around because I want to show you guys a couple of things so I made a great discovery all right so um, this area is a covered patio these windows are new but I guess when they're taking the windows down they busted the old windows because they were this was like covered with glass anyways I found this garden bed like I saw that the concrete stopped here but all of this over here was actually covered in grass and so once he started mowing I was like man there's concrete now notice here that there's this is the concrete porch and there's a concrete slab it, or the porch continues to go all the way around over there but I added these blocks because this kind of rises up over here and if I didn't add the blocks in the first rain would have just washed everything down into the garden bed so definitely the the ground has shifted and changed over time but i started digging in here and i was like whoa this soil is really dope as you see though there are some um roots that i was trying to pull up once again that's the pain in the butt uh in ground gardening when you have lots of trees and stuff you have these accessory roots that are all over the place there's one right over there so i'm just going to clip those down i'm going to pull them up as much as i can clip them down um, you can tell they already had some plants that I tried to leave here and, um, you know, just some, I don't know, some perennials that I'm just going to leave in the ground. But after digging it up and realized the soil was kind of dope, I ended up adding some, cause it is clay, you know, Texas, North Texas is known for clay, but I ended up adding some sand, adding some expanded shell and that's really it. It rained just a little bit this morning, but like this is mainly the soil that was already there. I'm not mad at it so I'm like oh my gosh this is my living room and really nice big windows let in a lot of sun and I'm like this is a perfect place to put something really cool um, so that when people come in the living room they can see it it looks nice but also it's super <laughs> it's super accessible to my back door which leads straight to my kitchen so I'm like wow this would be an amazing like kitchen garden now I don't know if you guys remember, once you go through this gate, the chickens are going to be on the other side. I'm low-key concerned about smell and stuff like that, so um, I did go and buy some plants. And one of the plants that I bought was this jasmine. Um, this is a Carolina jasmine. And I want to get, I'm going to get that potted kind of underneath the um, tree over there, maybe over there. A little bit but kind of in that area because I don't want it because this vine is very very prolific I don't want it to cover the gate but um I bought that to help it smell then I don't know if y'all remember I have a bunch of like baby rosemaries that I'm probably gonna put in this bed over here and I bought a lavender I bought some tomatoes and the reason I bought the tomatoes is because I don't have any more <laughs> I planted all my tomatoes in the garden beds on the other side over there so I bought some tomatoes and some marigolds and some basil and some nasturtiums um, and some rosemary and I'm just gonna plant this bed out like I said I'm really excited about it um, I just kind of wanted you to bring you guys along to see how I how I lay stuff out and you know the companion planting and how to do that and all that great stuff. All right, so when laying out your plants or uh, before you plant them, especially when you have starts like this, it's always nice to actually put them in the spot that you want. I've moved these around several times just looking at it and thinking about the benefits of each plant. So, uh, speaking of which, I'm going to go through each plant and why I placed them where I placed them so here I here are my three tomatoes these are all Roma tomatoes because I really want to do a lot of canning I found this well actually I was given this amazing recipe for a tomato basil soup that I want to can and have ready for winter um 
speaking of basil so once again I said the irrigation line is gonna come this way it's gonna have three rows so right now I have two tomatoes in this row plus whatever that is I think it's a uh, Jew, Jasmine Jew, whatever, I don't know what it is. Anyways, so I still have space for other. I might put some annuals here. But on this second row is my tomato, and then I have basil. So basil is a great companion plant for tomatoes because they're supposed to um, scare away hornworms, which are horrible. They can devour a whole tomato plant in a matter of hours. And so um, I got one basil, but I'm thinking that I might plant, you know, a couple here and a couple there just in between. This is a new house. I really don't know what pests I'm going to have to worry about, but um, basil is awesome. It also will help det deter other um, other pests and insects and once it starts flowering it will actually attract bees as well so um, next back here you have marigolds so I wanted the marigolds close because they are really good about not only attracting ladybugs which will help pollinate your your plants if you have pollinating plants these tomatoes are actually self pollinating so I don't have to worry about that but who doesn't love ladybugs because ladybugs eat aphids and uh, or aphids and aphids can um, destroy your plants and so I planted I put the marigolds around also in the sunny areas because I know that they can take the sun and so in this second row we have tomatoes we have the basil and then here I put lavender so lavender is awesome because its scent will help deter certain insects as well so when you're talking about lavender what are you chasing little dog <laughs> sorry so when you're talking about lavender um, lavender does an amazing job at um, deterring a lot of like cabbage loopers and um, cabbage worms and things of that nature also bees love purple flowers guys like bees love purple flowers I don't know what it is about purple flowers I was on the other side of my garden the other day and they just love that color blue purple yeah you'll get tons of bees and um, this lavender has a couple more flowers that are coming up so that's exciting um, so I wanted the lavender really close um, but I didn't want it too close because it, it's a perennial so it won't be moving so as I start to rotate each year what's in this bed this lavender is gonna stay here and um, so I didn't want it to be like too much impeding on the space um, also, as these tomatoes get really big, they are going to start casting a shadow kind of over this way as they get tall. And that's great because the lavender isn't going to just love all of this hot direct sun. Um, I mean, it needs full sun, but like this Texas heat, I tell you guys, is no joke. So in this row, tomato, basil, lavender, another marigold. And guess what I decided to put over here, guys? This is my goji berry bush. Um, it's probably two years old I think one year I don't remember uh, it's been through a lot <laughs> but I am happy to finally put it in a ground in the ground I think it's gonna do really good over here and it's gonna look really cool in front of this window here um, so anyway so then we go to this third row and once again I'm doing the rows based on the irrigation so I'm gonna have a line running this way but I have a marigold and then over here I have a nasturtium which I love nasturtiums. I am not the best at growing them though, I will admit, but they're just really pretty flowers and they're edible. And you can put them on top of salads and I've heard that it gives it a really nice spicy feel. Also, um, these will, I've heard that they will deter certain insects as well. And they're great companion plants for a lot of vegetables. So I didn't even know they sold starts like this in the store. This might be how I'm going to do my nasturtiums because nasturtiums, I don't do a good job growing them. Um, starting them from seed. So, meh, we'll see. But these look beautiful. And they're, these get really big. So I wanted it kind of in the back. Um, when I say the back, that's the door. So in the back over here, so that when they get really nice and big, they sprawl out kind of over the front and around the lavender. So I have another marigold, whatever that is. And then that's a rosemary that <laughs> Daryl is enjoying. So I bought three rosemaries and rosemaries, it's a herb. Daryl, come here. It's a herb and um, it will help deter bugs as well. Once again, the rosemary and the lavender are really good about deterring um, 
cabbage loopers, cabbage worms. They're really great to put around um, your kale, your broccoli, all of that great stuff. And so um, I'm not sure, once again, this is my first time growing goji berry. So I don't know, I don't think they have any just horrible pest, but I wanted this rosemary to be next to it, um, just in case. <laughs> And, and once again, this is full sun, like this is hardcore sun, no shade. So um, I think this is the best place for the rosemary because rosemaries are pretty hardy everywhere. Um, so once again, that first row up there, I'm just keeping, um, I'm probably going to, you know, maybe put some petunias or some uh, begonias or something down there, um, geraniums or something. I might even get more marigolds, but some I'm going to put some type of annual down there, something really pretty. But as far as my perennials, it'll be this rosemary will come back every year. Of course, it's goji berry and my lavender. And um, so I'm really excited. I think those are a good place. It's always important to note where you're putting your perennials because those will come back every year, um, along with whatever that is, is grass, I guess. Um, but I think they're in a great place. And um, as I start rotating this bed, um, I think this will look really good over time as the perennials get bigger and start filling out and all that great stuff just a really quick video on um, how I lay out garden beds or how I like to try and lay out garden beds. I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff in the ground. Another thing to remember is always make sure if you, when you're planting tomatoes, they will need something to support them over time. So make sure that you're putting a tomato cage or bamboo sticks, which I love. I'll show you a picture right here of what it looks after. And they're really easy bamboo twine at the top stick them in the ground they're great you can use them year after year um so anyways here is how they look after i love you guys me and daryl love you guys <laughs> and i'll see you next time like and subscribe all that great stuff